All right, thanks a lot for having me. Um, as you guys can see, I've set up a ton of cameras because I think any time that you're kind of out doing this stuff, that's great content. And for those that do go out and present these types of things, even if you're pitching in front of a small group, there's no harm in getting somebody out on the cell phone to be able to record that, throw it on your social media channels. It's just another way to generate content out of stuff that you're already doing. So I have a limited amount of time. I'm gonna move very quickly, but I'm gonna stick around till probably 11. So if anybody wants to find me afterwards, we've talked before actually. Um, yeah, Yellowbeard. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. definitely. Yeah, but good stuff. Uh, it's one of those things that I think Denmark, as much as people say that there isn't a whole lot of networking going on, that's total bullshit. I think a lot of people that are out there and mixing it up, definitely make those right connections and those that aren't are totally missing out. So big thanks for having me. Um, again, I'm going to move very quickly, but feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I give my slides to everybody. Um, I'm just happy to provide as much value as I can. So a little bit about me. I've co-founded six different startups. Um, the CMO of Valuer.ai, we basically do corporate innovation in terms of matching small or medium-sized startups with large corporations. I have 11 years of marketing experience. I published a few e-marketing books and yada, yada, yada. Uh, I am actually doing a growth hacking course over at Talent Garden in two and a half weeks. So if anybody wants to throw away some money, uh, feel free to, to come on out to those things. I do probably 10 hours a month at either CBS, KU, Kia, ITU, and DTU, just giving away the same shit for free because I feel like that's what it's all about. You're supposed to give back. I've been in the startup scene for way too long to feel like I need to charge everybody here uh, a fixed price to be able to learn stuff that's available online and available from somebody like myself. So feel free to connect. I always put out the events and the days that I'm going. And uh, I think that's the whole kind of concept. So again, I'm going to rush through a bunch of things today, but I'm going to go over some branding BS because I'm not a huge fan of branding. Uh, I am going to go over some other marketing things. I'm going to hit a bunch of different areas within lead channels and tools within that, how to beat some of your competitors on a zero budget kind of situation and some content growth acts. Little fun fact, I was on an American reality television show about two and a half years ago about moving to Denmark called House Hunters International and they made me look like a douchebag. So feel free to check that out on YouTube. Uh, my goal for today is to provide value. So hopefully everybody here can walk away with at least a new interest or something that they didn't know before in terms of a tool or a way to go about using these tools. So some of the stuff that uh, I've talked about at length is there's really two different types of marketers. There's those that are branding marketers and strategists, and those that are actually doing the work, real marketers, digital marketers. And it's really difficult these days to kind of measure the two. Uh, I've seen a lot of really interesting agencies charge a shitload of money for not a lot, and they claim it in, in kind of the, the face of branding. And one of the most interesting things that one of the most recent companies I worked at was sitting in a room with a bunch of senior managers, there was eight of us, and we're talking about what a coffee mug will say about us as a company so that we need to buy 100 coffee mugs for the office. We spent over an hour talking about, well, because we're a communication company, maybe we have a wider mouth to the mug and people are like, oh, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on, guys? Like, if you take the amount of salary per minute, we can buy every type of coffee mug that we're, we're interested in now. And, and it's insane because I think people focus too much on branding especially if you're early stage or even medium stage, you know, you started to scale. I think you're gonna find yourself in a situation where your brand evolves over time. So don't paint yourself into a corner. And often people get handcuffed to essentially this really strict brand regimen. What will end up happening is one is the, uh, the, the evolution of your brand. It, it is the concept that as your company matures, as your features grow, as you do more for your community, as you continue to put out new things, you start to uncover what your brand really is. So for those that are really focused on branding, let it go. Uh, it's something that, again, I think the bare minimum is to have a set of primary colors, a set of secondary colors, a font type, a logo, obviously, and there's some free websites there where you can find that stuff. Tone is something I'm not even gonna spend time on. The idea is the tone that you explain anything should be 
the way that an old friend is explaining something to you at brunch. There is a very big difference between the way that Snoop Dogg would write and talk about things versus David Attenborough, but that's pretty much common sense. So now to some of the growth hacky stuff. If you are a really small startup and you want to get some more reach going, the idea is you can't be everywhere all the time. You can't produce all your own content, but you don't have to. And I think this is a really cool technique for those that are trying to figure out where does the best content come from? It's stolen, right? It's taking it from somebody else and making a better version of it. Not actually copy and paste. I'm saying find something that you enjoy that your competitors are doing or somebody else in your space is doing and then make a better version of it. I'm gonna show a few different examples of how that works. And I'm also gonna show a few different tools that you can use within Reddit, within Quora. And I think it's really amazing to see how you can basically curate a ton of social media content practically overnight without having to do much more than an hour per week. And this will save you thousands of hours in the long run while you're trying to scale. Because if you're an early stage startup, realistically, you need to be focused on your product a little more than you should be your marketing. So one of the techniques is called the skyscraper technique. The skyscraper technique came from Brian Dean of Backlinko. And essentially it goes back to the old days of New York City where everybody wanted to have the tallest skyscraper in the world. The idea is that everybody kind of was getting to the same height due to the engineering uh, confines. So somebody decided to put a 30 meter flagpole at the top of their skyscraper. Then they had the tallest skyscraper in New York. So then it turned into, well, I'm gonna put a 60 meter one. And the next guy was a 100 meter one. So I'm gonna pull up here one of my competitors, right? This is a tool called Ahrefs. It's great for competitor research, but it also tells you what is your competitor's best piece of content. So one of my competitors is Board of Innovation. I have to spell it right. Innovation. Cool. So they have a better ranking than me in terms of their overall site health. The idea is I go down to top content and I can essentially see what these guys are doing right. I can see based on the social engagement and the amount of referring domains that a piece of content has gotten, that this is potentially their highest ranking piece of content. So the idea is they have a piece of content here that's called 50 plus business models. So as valuer, I would turn around and go, cool, I'm gonna write an article that's 75 plus of the best business models you need to know today. People start looking around like, well, is that cheating? No, it's beating my, my competition at their best game. If I can outrank them at their best article, I essentially steal their traffic. You need to look at your competitors this way in just the same fashion. And there's a million different little nuances into this in terms of breaking out keywords. I'm happy to go into more detail later. This is one way to do it. So the next way that I wanted to pull up was using Reddit. How many people here are familiar with Reddit, right? Hopefully everybody, cool. So Reddit allows you to actually see kind of what's going on within the community. So uh, I remember, uh, Johan, you said one of the startups I was gonna meet with was in kind of the industry of health, right? Cool, so I do a quick search for health and then I'm gonna search by the last 30 days. The idea is in psychology, there's this concept of social proof. Let's say you're on vacation and you walk down kind of the main strip, you see an empty restaurant on the right and you see a packed restaurant on the left. Which one do you want to eat at? You don't eat at the empty one because it's like nobody goes there. That one isn't cool. It's not for us. Let's go to the one that people obviously are going to because everybody's there. I want to be like everybody. This is a concept of social proof. And the idea is that if you can show on a channel like Reddit that if it works there, it will work on your social media or it will work on your blog. So the concept is either sharing these stories, if it's a news story, you know that it will already get engagement because it's already doing it on Reddit, so why wouldn't it do it on your newsfeed within Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or what have you? Or if it's a meme, hey, make it a, a slightly different version, or fuck it, steal it, I don't care, and I don't think anybody's gonna come after you for that. But this is a really great way to see what's ranking and how that works. One last one that I wanna do within Ahrefs again is Quora. Quora is a question and answer website. Basically, you want to see what are the questions that people are asking the most about your topic and then start to answer those as a subject matter expert, eventually pointing people over to your site. This is how you get referral traffic. This is how you kind of get brand recognition. 
So I am basically looking for the top pages within Quora. So this is all the pages across Quora. Quora is a gigantic site. It's basically a Q&A website. And then I want to search specific keywords like my industry, health. Or maybe it's uh, suck and blow, but I think you'll find different things inside of that. Uh, so the idea is what comes up here are essentially answers that you could potentially come in and say, well, that's a really fascinating thing. Here is my thought on the topic. And by the way, here's a link to my website. We do the same thing. Check us out. You know that you have validation because these are the highest ranked pages in terms of traffic. So you have the highest pot uh, potential of actually driving users from these answer sites over to you. And the next step forward is going on Fiverr and basically getting Fiverr people or uh, virtual assistants to basically go in and like your answers so you shoot up to the top. That's a different growth hack. That's a little more shady, but you know, pick your poison. So those are some really basic techniques and I think they're all really helpful. Um, I, I would love to go into more of that stuff, but I just, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of tight on time. So I'm gonna skip ahead to some other things. So user acquisition is, is one of those things that I think a lot of people miss out on in terms of some of the future opportunities that happen on your site. Uh, if you're driving traffic, if you're getting people to come to visit your site, you need to be able to grab them somehow. A lot of these are great tools that I'm sure many of you are familiar with that basically allow people to convert. But there's a few other tools that I want to show you that you can also utilize. One of my favorites that's underrated is Active Campaign and ConvertFox. We're all familiar with Mail uh, MailChimp. If you're an early stage startup, always gravitate towards MailChimp to start because it's the easiest one to go with. But some of the other types that are underutilized are exit pop-ups. So this is Hello Bar, this is Unbounce. There are hundreds of these different kind of pop-up things. The idea is actually, if you put two in a row, uh, it is essentially looked at as Google saying, this was not a bounce. A bounce is defined as when somebody comes to your site and then doesn't interact or engage and then they leave. We all now close these out because as your cursor drifts towards the top right, basically this window pops up. If you have two in a row, it's basically deemed as, well, this wasn't somebody closing a window, they must have closed something else at the same time. Thus, you effectively lower your bounce rate, which essentially in Google's eyes means you got a baller site, let's pump you way up the search engine results pages. A really simple, sneaky way of continuing to kind of build your brand and continue to, uh, yeah, to rank. Um, this is where you basically capture people for, new, uh, for newsletters, and I think that's a great tool. Um, some of the other ones are basically uh, push notifications. Push crew is free. Don't have a ton of time to go into that, but I'll hit it later. Uh, A-B testing is probably one of the last things I can focus on because I think we're kind of tight on time. Um, conversion rate optimization is my jam. I love this stuff. The idea is that how do I get people to convert uh, more easily? How do I remove the barriers or reduce the amounts of apprehension before getting somebody to convert? There are thousands of little techniques and tons of books written on this. But the idea is very simple. You have experiments, right? On the right side is a super long landing page. On the left, a shorter one. Oddly enough, I, I can't really ask you which one do you think converts because you can see the answer on the right. 63% more conversions for the super long one. This is counter to what everybody for some reason thinks is that people don't read or people don't look at stuff. Sometimes you need more information in order to make a buying decision than you would imagine because you're too close to the product. The way that you can end up doing a lot of this testing is through a cheap tool called Optimizely, VWO, OmniConvert, or Google Optimize. Google Optimize is free, up to 5,000 impressions, which lets you one, uh, run one experiment per month, and it's a great way to continue to test, does the green button work better, or does the red button? Uh, does this image, or does this image? Uh, last little bit, for those that are having difficulty understanding what's happening within their site, uh, I introduce you to either heat maps or screen recordings. Uh, it's going to take me a little too long to log in, but Inspectlet is something that is GDPR compliant. It records every user that comes to your site. So one of the greatest things that I found when I first started working over at a company called Plan Day was that the phone number within the form was all jacked up. I continued to make suggestions. Nobody listened to me. Six months later, I start sending over screen recordings and they go, hey, the phone number's jacked up. And I'm like, no shit. So it's one of those things, sometimes in order to validate your cause, you need to see how people are interacting with your site. Inspectlick and Hotjar are essentially videos that show how somebody is confused or how they don't understand how to convert. This will essentially increase all of your conversions tenfold if you're doing something wildly wrong. The last little bit, um, I love this stuff, right? 
Some people are into wrenching on old cars on the weekends. Some people are into bird watching. This, this is my bird watching. Like this is my life. You guys can tell I'm jazzed up by this. Find that in your product. Find that in what you do. Or if you don't, get the fuck out because you're going to burn out. But I love this stuff. Like this is my favorite thing. And unfortunately, this is what my weekends look like. I'm also working. That's Saturday and Sunday. But I have this as a hobby and I also help others and I want to make sure that I'm bringing people with me. But the idea is that I don't have time to wonder whether or not this is going to be my goal in life. I can, I know it is. And sometimes that's interpersonally difficult to say in a society that says, Hey, it's five o'clock, go home. I don't do that. And maybe that makes me a crazy person, but I also think I'm so in love with the concept of this because I'm constantly learning that I become a better person every week that I look back. It's crazy. And so I, I hope that if nothing else, maybe you make a little bit of time for learning. You know, one of the greatest things is to spend one hour a day spending that time on learning something new or something you didn't know, because we get so focused in the minutia. Uh, all of these different growth hacks and tools, they're available online. There's tons of websites for this stuff. I do tons of free presentations if you follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, and you can also get my slides by connecting with me on LinkedIn. Um, I think I just kind of wrapped up. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, is that 15 minutes or did I go yeah, longer? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Taylor. Cool. <laughs> Taylor is going to um, set up a little home in here until 11. Um, and if you want to meet with him, you can just sign up for Tanya. Um, Taylor, just one thing yes. uh, when we're in the, in the plural um, space here. Uh, so. You mentioned a thing about brand consistency. Yes. And and the whole that branding in itself, like get it out of your head. When you when you think brands across markets, how is it useful to think about that? Especially if it's your early, second, third, and fourth market. Right. I, I honestly I think it's one of those interesting things. If you start looking at international brands, you'll see that the way that I don't know, let's just say Coca-Cola, eh, that's probably not a good one maybe a beer company tends to market to the United States versus maybe a beer company out here or in Ireland. I think the reality is none of us are, are at that level yet. Otherwise, I don't think we'd be in a shared workspace. But the concept is very simple. I don't think you should tie yourself to your brand. I think you should follow some of the basic templates in terms of this is the right color, this is the right font. But as you continue to learn, I'm learning stuff every month. Everything should be an experiment and then chase the stuff that works. If you tie yourself to, we're never going to release this stuff, or our blog is only about uh, clients that we get or our product, you're going to lose. The idea is you need to gravitate towards what is working, and that's what will evolve your brand. So focusing in on this is the way that we talk, this is the way that we do things, a year from now, if you look at yourself a year ago, you're going to be like, I didn't know anything. I, I've learned so much just within the last month. So how can you say that that person isn't going to change, much less your brand is, because you have to look at your person, sorry, your brand almost as a person, an individual that is evolving and changing and taking shape based on the new learnings, the new products, the new features. So I don't think it's fair to basically set yourself within this rigid confines and say, we can't change because it's so important. Fuck that. Evolve, change, make mistakes, and figure out as you go, because once you get into this scaled situation where Maybe you've gotten a round B funding and you're looking at a hundred million dollar valuation or valuation. That's a different deal. Then you got to be a little more secure on your brand. But for now, everybody's learning. Everybody's changing. Don't submit yourself into something that you can't run away from. Thank cool. you. That was a really long answer. Yeah, no. Short question. Sorry. <laughs>